Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming. So next up, we have Opatunde Adipoju uh, and her presentation, Trust the Data to Speak for Itself. Please help me welcome her. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Opatunde Adipoju, and I'm an undergraduate student. Uh, so I started learning data science and machine learning about a year ago, and uh, this talk is is like the lessons that I have learned from my one year of doing machine learning and data science. So I hope uh, you learn it, you know, too, as I share my story on trust the data to speak for itself. So uh, a lot of times, as beginners. A lot of times we just always want to, you know, dig deep into doing the models or doing the linear regression and the logistic regression and all of those big, big things that um, machine learning engineers and machine learning practitioners do. But a lot of time we do not pay attention to very little details like data visualization and exploratory data analysis. And I'm going to share a story of what made me to understand that it is very important that you, that we do exploratory data analysis so that we'll be able to understand our data very well before we go into building models. So there was this hackathon that we did last year in, in September last year. That was about three months into me learning data science and machine learning. So in that hackathon, we were told to build a predictive model that can predict student scores. So we, we were given about four hours to do that. So there was a particular lady there who just, you know, she was three weeks into learning data science and machine learning, and uh, she was doing all of the exploratory data analysis. While we were there just trying to, you know, build the model, so we went from doing logistic regression to doing, um, uh, then we went from doing logistic regression to doing all of those big, big things and uh, using different models, you know, so that we could improve our prediction. But she was just there trying to explore the data. So she went from doing the, the bar chart to the histogram and all of that. So our, after the hackathon, after we, we, she, she wasn't able to do too much. She was just able to submit two predictions. But we on the other side, my friends and I, we were able to submit over like 20 or 25 predictions. And then she, after the old hackathon, we realized that she came top of the, of, the, of the leaderboard, and we were like 15 or 20. So we were so surprised that, okay, she just, you know, she just submitted two predictions. We submitted about 20 predictions. How, how was she able to get this score? So after the hackathon, we did the, we went through the whole process again, and then we realized that what gave her an edge was the fact that she spent more time trying to understand the data. So that helped her in her feature engineering. So by the time she was able to do her feature engineering, she was able to do it so well that our prediction was so good enough. So since that time, I got to realize that most beginners, especially people who are just coming into machine learning and data science, they really need to understand that it is very, very important. Although it's very, it looks very infinitesimal, data visualization is a very important step of, of, of building machine learning models. And that's what uh, I want to talk about today. So whether as a data scientist or... Uh, so let me just explain this thing. So uh, we as data scientists and machine learning engineers, our job actually is to, is to help people believe in data, to help them, on, to help them make um, decisions from data and to help them do certain um, things from, from data. But we fall into this uh, thing that I call the doubtitis syndrome. So we as, as data scientists and machine learning engineers that were supposed to convince people with the data and help them make data-driven decisions. We, don't, we tend not to trust our data very well because we believe that the data doesn't have enough to speak to us. So we want to, we want to you know, try to use our instinct to make predictions. So instead of us to just spend more time trying to understand the data and explore the data. So we just, you know, we just fall into this, um, syndrome of trying to use our instincts to do the feature engineering and I have realized that that doesn't pay enough and that's why I called it the syndrome so we are like this young guy over here who is just 
who's just looking and is just like, or you this data, I don't even believe in what, you, what you're saying. Let me just use my instinct. And that's not the way it is supposed to be. We're supposed to you know, spend more time when, when we're trying to do our data uh, analysis and when we're trying to make our models, when we're trying to build our models, we try to spend more time in exploring our data very well so that we're able to build very good data predictions. So in this talk, I'm going to uh, quickly run through what data visualization is. I'm going to talk about categories of data visualization and why data visualization is very important. Uh, so, our, so what is data visualization? I would like to assume that, or I would like to say that data visualization is just a means of communicating data in a visual context. So take for example, you have your data, large, very large data sets, and you're trying to find a way that the data sets you know, you know, connect with each other. You're trying to find the way the features connect with each other. Data visualization is the process you go through to help see the connection that is hidden in the large data sets that you have. So data visualization is that process that you take to help you you know, get a, a very good understanding of your data in a very visual context, in a very appealing format. I also define data visualization as the mouthpiece of the data. So data visualization is what the data uses to speak to you as either the pro professional or as a business person. Data visualization is what, uh, is, is, is that tool or that means by which the data communicates with you. It's, it's, it's like the mouthpiece. I also say data visualization is the bridge between data and humans. So data don't, the data doesn't have mouth to speak for itself, but data visualization is the mouth by which the data uses to speak for itself. Um, so categories of data visualization. So uh, I... From my understanding, I, I told you that I, I just started learning data science and machine learning about a year ago. And from my understanding of data visualization, I categorized data visualization into two. Uh, the first one is exploratory data analysis, and the second one is explanatory data visualization. And I'm going to explain both in, 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 the, in the next slide. So what is, let's, let's go first to explanatory data visualization. So what is explanatory data visualization? So I define explanatory data visualization as, as a means of getting the data to speak to the client. So as a data scientist or a data analyst, what we do when we do our data visualization, after we've gotten all of the information we want to get, and we want to present it to our clients, what we do there is uh, explanatory data visualization. And um, what we use, most of the things we use for explanatory data visualization are things like bar charts and pie charts and histogram and things that will make um, professionals who are, not into, um, who are not data scientists or machine learning engineers, maybe C-level executives, to be able to understand what you're trying to say. So that's, that's explanatory data visualization. And our explanatory data visualization gets you to have an understanding of the data outcome. So take, for example, you have a client that, uh, say, give you a data, and they want to make data-driven decisions from from uh, the data that they presented to you. So uh, explanatory data visualization is what you do to give them a basic understanding of the data that you were given after you've done all of the processes, after you've you know, gone through all of the processes of analyzing the data. So explanatory data visualization also communicates data outcome to clients. It helps um, clients to be able to understand uh, data sets very well, to be able to make decisions from the data that you have already analyzed for them. So it's particularly useful for data analysts and data scientists, and uh, it's um, useful for um, people who, uh, who uh, they don't have the programming background. Usually all of the, the, the people who work with C-level executives, they use explanatory data visualization. So EDV is very important for data scientists because it helps, uh, it helps your clients to be able to have a, a, an understanding of, of what you want, of what they, 
what they gave to you, like the data sets that they gave to you, um, exploratory data visualization helps them to understand, helps them to understand uh, what the data sets that um, you were, they were, that was given to you. I'm sorry I'm slurring, I'm, I'm quite nervous, really, really nervous. And uh, people standing up are making me feel very nervous. It's my first time doing this kind of thing, so please pardon me. I am so sorry. Thank you, thank you. I'm so sorry. Okay. So what is exploratory data analysis? I define exploratory data analysis as you getting the data to speak to you during uh, machine learning processes. So uh, exploratory data analysis is just uh, what we do when we want to carry out our machine learning, um, um, we want to carry out a machine learning, um, um, uh, want to do a machine learning, um, want to build a machine learning model. So exploratory data analysis is uh, the, the second step after you have your data, um, they always advise, or professionals always advise that you do exploratory data analysis, and, uh, and that's where we get to use pandas and matplotlibs to be able to understand uh, what the data contains and how the data is best um, positioned so that it's going to help with the future engineering processes. So, uh, so it's the, f I said it's the first step, but actually it's the second step. And uh, it gets you to help, to, it helps you to listen to the data. It helps you to be able to understand what the data entails. So uh, an approach of data analysis that uses various techniques to reveal information hidden in the data and maximize in, insights into a data set is what I call exploratory data analysis. Uh, so what are the methods of exploratory data analysis? We have uh, different methods. We have four, according to the thing I, 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 I understand. From what I understand, we have univariate non-graphical non method. We have the univariate graphical method, multivariate, and then multivariate non-graphical method and multivariate graphical method. And I'm going to explain that in the next slide. So univariate non-graphical methods are just, uh, are the methods of exploratory data analysis that don't require uh, data visualization processes. So this is, uh, they are useful for sample distribution kind of analysis. So it's something like trying to, you know, get the mean, median, mode, the basic uh, um, statistics to, to understand what the data is all about. And data types are best, the data types that are best used for univariate non-graphical methods are categorical data and quantitative data. And examples are measures of central tendency, measures of spread, and measures of skewness. So univariate graphical methods are useful for data observation of a single variable. And uh, they are perfect for visualization of categorical data, graphical representation of outliers. So univariate graphical methods are what we use when we want to you know, get an understanding of whether there is an outlier in a data set or whether you know, there, is, there is something, there is, there is a skewness or maybe something, you just want to you know, visualize what the, the data set is, is all about. So that's univariate graphical method. And examples are bar plots, stem and leaf plots, and then box plots. Uh, the multivariate graphical, non-graphical methods, I, 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 I explained them there that multivariate non-graphical EDA techniques, they show the relationship between two or more variables in the form of either cross tabulation or statistics. And examples are ANOVA, correlation metrics, and covariance metrics. Uh, and then multivariate graphical methods are useful for comparing two or more variables graphically and uh, they are perfect for detecting and analyzing cross-trained data, and uh, examples are scatter plots, side-by-side -side invariate plots, violin plots. Uh, so what are the benefits of 
data analysis and what are the benefits data analysis bring to machine learning projects. Data analysis helps you to set the right context. Um, okay, so if you want to uh, understand your data very well, I've said that over and over again, that if you want to be able to understand what your data is all about, data analysis is what um, helps you. And then also when you want to carry out your feature engineering, data analysis helps you to know which features are best to, um, to use in your feature engineering and which features are to be dropped in your feature engineering. They always say that less is more in, in, in machine, when, when it comes to building machine learning models, that when, when you have a, a very useful data sets, you don't necessarily have to have so many data sets. So when you have very useful features, you can drop the ones that are not very useful so that you'll be able to have a, a very good model that will work and will be highly optimized. Um, so it also helps, another benefit that, that does it, it also helps you to identify feature distribution. And what do I mean that, by that? It helps you to understand how your features are widely distributed, how the data, how the data is widely distributed and you know where the data is highly concentrated and where it's not. It helps you to be able to understand what, uh, what which which feature in the data helps um, and which feature in the data doesn't help. Um, so uh, the next slide is just you know me trying to say that uh, if you try to skip um, uh, an exploratory data analysis, it's it's a very you know not a good idea. Uh, and um, to master the art of data analysis, you need to be a good storyteller. And then um, EDV helps you to achieve that, that's exploratory data visualization. And feature engineering is difficult without appropriate EDA. And then make models learn faster and easier with when you let the data speak for itself. Uh, uh, and so this is my well, Twitter account. And um, sorry, I didn't put the, sorry. <laughs> 